Welcome back. This is part two of the video where we are going to debug a Power BI DAX measure using the I can rule. Now, this is the this is the setup that we have been looking at, essentially a nested if or a switch function inside a SumX. And we had looked at the underlying measures, metro rank and population, and we had zeroed in on the metro rank because we had done a debug measure to see that that's the measure that was breaking down inside SumX. So inside of SumX, it was returning us all ones instead of the expected result. So let's go forth and apply the I can principle we're starting with step one, which is I for incoming filters. But the first thing you have to do before you start there is to focus on a single cell. Remember, every cell is an island. So when you're debugging, just focus on a single cell. So we're going to pick this one and start there. So what is the incoming filter? Now, you might be tempted to say it's Abilene, Texas. But I would recommend that you train yourself to think of filter context in terms of table column equals value. So I'll say it that way. It's a metro area, which is the table name, metro area, the column name equals Abilene, Texas. Great. But notice that there's also a sum X in play here. Now, X functions are iterators. They go step by step through the table. Now, right now, sum X has only a single row to work with. So it steps in and creates a row context for that row. It gives you that row. But since our measure is uh, we're using a measure here that acts as if it's wrapped inside a calculate. And if you remember what that does, that automatically transitions the row context to filter context. Now, if that sounds a little too much, look for the link in the video to go watch the original ICANN video. All right, so now we have the, the single row which is transitioned to a filter context. So essentially, this becomes our filter context. Metro area ID is this, metro area is this, population estimate is this. Perfect. Now let's, uh, so that's our filter context. Move on to the next step in the ICANN four step process. C is for calculate, does not apply. There's no calculate in this function. The next step is apply relationships, does not apply. It's just a single table. Great. Let's do the numbers. And now we have this filter context, and now it's time to work out. But this is a measure again. What do you do if that happens? You just apply the I can principle again. Now, of course, with this one, we're going to keep it simple uh, by just focusing on the filter context and specifically this all uh, function over here. So rank X and it says all metro area, metro area. Now, what does all do? All essentially removes filters. So this clears out this filter that's gone. But what's left in the metro area table after that filter is gone? If the, these filters are still in play, metro area ID is 10180, population estimate is this, it's still a single row table. And if rank X is going to try to rank something in a single row table, the rank is always going to be one. And that is why this, this measure, the test metro rank, always returns a one. Now there's also a link in the detail for a rank X video if you need help, more help with that. So what we need to do here is instead of just clearing the metro area filter, we need to change that to the whole table so that it clears all the filters. And once all the filters would be cleared, we would have the complete metro area table and then the population can be ranked correctly. So let's see that in action. Let's go back to our Power BI file. So this is the one that was not working. I'll go back to Metro rank and notice this, this, this is where the problem was occurring. We were clearing the filter only on one column. All we have to do is just change it to remove filters from all. And I hit enter and notice uh, the test rank works. It's time to switch to glorious green. Woohoo! Test Metro rank works. Weighted population sum works and it is returning the correct expected result as we had kind of you know, pre-calculated in a quick cheat sheet Excel file. Now, of course, this is way more powerful than Excel because you have the magic of define once, use everywhere. So now we have this weighted population. We can slice and dice it by any attribute in our table. So there you have it, my friends. You can debug any Power BI DAX measure if you just take a step-by-step -step approach. Remember, 
If I can do it, so can you. Power on, my friends. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.